It sounds it sounds good the room. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you can you can take the Should I go behind with them yeah. all? Yeah, right? That's uh <laughs> Hello and welcome to Asia Bagus. <laughs> it's 2011. All the old, all the old hosts of the program, they're all dead. <laughs> I'm here in uh, Indonesia <laughs> with some uh, traditional musicians. I don't really know the names, but um, I think they're good. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just this like Singaporean pseudo. Um, Go to America, study one, two days, and come back with a fake accent. Kind of. <laughs> Do I look like I'm talking to you or not? Or okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. How lame is that? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. Ask me something, you know, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, um, hello, yes, uh, my name is uh, Mark Chia. Um, I normally play music under the name um, One Man Nation, and um, I'm here uh, for the project The Future Sounds of Folk, which is basically um, a project where I go around looking for traditional folk musicians um, who are doing strange things with their music or have got strange approaches to their to their music and their lives and to collaborate with them as well as to feature and present them as um and to present their solo work or the work that they do in groups so um today here with me is actually uh two really 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 interesting musicians that i met in indonesia um this one here uh, standing up is a uh, bamboo wukir he's basically actually no his real name is Wukir Suryadi, but um, he plays this uh, self-made instrument. He's basically like a luthier of um, really kind of odd instruments. And um, I've been to his house in Jogjakarta. He has got like maybe like 50 over strange things made from all sorts of um, strange gadgets. Most of them are string-based instruments, like the one that he has now. And um, when I said earlier on Bamboo Wukir, that's basically his... Um, the name that he uses when he's performing and he's more popularly known as this and it's also the name of his instrument which um, I guess we'll see at some point of time in this program um, yes you want them to say anything <laughs> okay introduce both of them mm, okay I'll introduce Jim Bot now okay in the cut <laughs> okay and uh, the other yeah. Teacher. <laughs> Traditional teacher. The other uh, musician uh, here today is um, Iman uh, Roman, or more popularly known as uh, Jimbot. He's he's like a insane uh, musician, multi instrumentalist who's uh, traditionally trained in uh, Sundanese uh, Sundanese gamelan. Basically, his whole family is an orchestra. It's one one huge uh, gamelan orchestra. And ever since uh, probably his infancy, he has been playing uh, gamelan and percussion. And when I met him, it was in Bandung. It was um, it was actually for the first installation of the Future Sounds of Folk. When I first arrived um, in Bandung, I was looking for musicians like uh, for the project. And I met um, Jimbot through his group called Karinding Attack. So Karinding Attack is basically a group made up of like around a fluctuating group of around seven to ten members, who are all kind of uh, former or still currently metal heads, heavy metal dudes, who want to um, go back to a kind of a more traditional approach to music, like a more a real um, tribal approach almost, 
And what they do is that they, they play this um this mouth harp um called the karinding. It's kind of like a Jew harp, but it's played in a different way. So Jimbot actually kind of um organized this group together of metal hits. And um he doesn't play the karinding, he creates the he creates the compositions and he also plays the, the melody, he plays the suling, like the flute, or he plays he plays anything over the base of Karindings. So the Karinding attack, most of them are playing, almost all of them are playing this mouth harp with um, fluctuating rhythms and creating kind of a, a very strange, very weird kind of a, a, a rhythmic kind of a backdrop. And they've got two um, percussionists with them playing kind of a traditional um, bamboo percussion, which if you look at the bamboo wukir later, you'll see that there is a kind of a similar reference it's kind of like bamboo where you strip out the, the inner parts of the bamboo, leaving only the top, um, the top, the upper crust. And um, you kind of tense, you, you put um, small wooden pegs underneath the, the stripped out bamboo and it creates tension on the top skin of the bamboo. And these things are used um, as percussion instruments in, uh, in Sunda. And because they're all tuned, um, they're all of different lengths, they create different pitches as well. So it's a kind of tuned percussion. And two of them are in Karinding attack together with the Karindings and with Jimbot. So when I met him there, I was actually supposed to perform um, solo as one man nation. Um, but I took this opportunity basically uh, for, for the future sounds of folk. I invited him because I was supposed to give a talk about the future sounds of folk there. And um, I said, well, Jimbot, bring whatever you want down and let's just have a, let's just have a, let's just have a go, you know. Let's do an improvised set, um, Future Sounds of Folk Part 1. Let's try it out. So he came down with, um, with a set of uh, bonangs and, uh, and a set of kendangs, which is the hand drums and these kettles here. Um, and we just went for it. It was just like basically a, a straight up improv session for Future Sounds of Folk 1. And straight away, I think we hit it off in a, in a, in a great way because I think mm, not just musically or maybe on a kind of um, on a level where, where we connect this. Um, I really don't like to talk about this because it sounds really cheesy, you know? It sounds like some super kind of new age stuff. But, um, well, I mean, we connect on this on this intangible level, this, this level of communication amongst musicians that that I can never describe in words, but it's something that I know, that I sense, and when it happens, it happens. I, I can never describe this... Um, this connection and I think maybe he felt it because he saw my live show um, before through the video I think I showed it to him and 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 it it moves something in him or or something was triggered in him and he was he was really enthusiastic and really wanted as well to participate in the project and really wanted um, to try out what it was like to play with a with an electronic musician like myself but I mean his approach as well. I've, I've been talking a, a lot with him these last weeks uh, or days that we have been here in Amsterdam. And um, I discovered that he has got very, very, very similar approaches to me as well to, towards music. In the sense that, that, you know, music for us is, is, not, is not the end. It's not this perfecting of a technique or a, or a, or a, the perfection of a, of a kind of technology or the perfection of a, of a live set. It goes beyond all this. It's supposed to music for him, for me, and I think for Wukir as well. Or I'm sure for Wukir as well. It's more this kind of the sense of transcendence through music, this sense when when only through through the sounds and through the performing of it, through the sense of it, through the the physical vibrations of the sounds in a room, um, and how we react to it, and where we go from there in a psychological, mental, um, spiritual state. Uh, may, may, maybe that is what. Um, each of us have in common and, and maybe that's why um, maybe it's these kinds of uh, musicians that um, that I have uh, been looking for when I'm on the, when I'm going around looking for musicians everywhere I go um, Can you tell me uh, yeah maybe I grab the monogram okay uh, what, what is the uh, what is the right dimension for describing the music Mm. You can answer in Indonesian. Mm. Experimental music di Indonesia, saya pikir masih ada di kalangan uh, apa ya 
sedikit uh, Kecuali kalau kita main eksperimental di Indonesia like kalau aku bikin konser gitu ini musik apa musik eksperimental itu masih seperti aneh. Eh uh, orang masih seperti wow apa ini musik apa ini. Tapi kita di uh, Indonesia mulai mencoba memasuki dan membangun masyarakat yang 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 suka dengan atau yang butuh dengan kebutuhan-kebutuhan musik seperti eksperimental. Jadi uh, sejauh ini <tuh> Uh, kita melakukan saja apa yang kita mau Jadi kita buat konser Di Jogja, di Bali Di Lombok Tentang musik yang Yang menurut mereka itu eksperimental gitu. Tapi sejauh ini uh, Saya pribadi Lebih membebaskan diri saya Untuk tidak terkotak pada, pada sebuah genre musik Saya lebih total Lebih enak ketika Bebas saja Ketika bermusik Toh meskipun ketika di Terminal akhir Pak ketika jadi sebuah album itu wow ini eksperimental oh ini avant-garde oh ini macam-macam itu saya serahkan kepada masyarakat eksperimental musik di Indonesia oh ya uh, eksperimental musik di Indonesia uh, menurut saya sih uh, Ada sih sebenarnya di tapi di ruang-ruang tertentu mungkin hmm. tidak seperti di kita mungkin di Belanda. Belanda kalau di contoh di Bandung gitu di ruang-ruang tertentu ruang publik terus di common room hmm. mungkin di uh, sekolah tinggi juga di institusi ada. universitas universiti sekolah tinggi seni itu ada gitu eksperimental cuman Kupnya tidak ada. tidak sekupnya tidak dengan Tidak seperti pop atau jazz, dangdut atau segala macam yang popularitasnya memang sudah sudah populer gitu. Mungkin eksperimental masih proses uh, dalam tahap proses, tapi menurut saya sih masih banyak gitu yang yang masih ada yang masih banyak yang suka oh, yeah. eksperimental. Dan saya sendiri saya sebenarnya basic uh, di basic uh, kultur tradisional gitu, tapi mencoba bukan membebaskan tapi mencoba uh, mencari pengalaman dan mencari ilmu tidak hanya untuk itu gitu tapi mencoba gitu mencoba mencoba dan saya sendiri sama seperti Bukir tidak menggenrekan bahwa saya seperti ini tapi pada dasarnya mungkin masyarakat yang bisa menilai dan yang bisa melihat dan saya uh, suka dengan eksperimental mungkin karena ada sesuatu hal yang Different ya berbeda gitu yeah. yang berbeda gitu ada sesuatu yang berbeda dan mungkin di Indonesia tidak sama mungkin yeah. seperti di kita karena uh, kultur eh budaya yang 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 berbeda dan mungkin kebiasaan 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 orang gitu yang yang berbeda. Oh saya tambahkan, Wis. Oh <coughs> mungkin juga yang menjadi oh. Di Indonesia itu sering sekali ketika kita membuat sebuah konser itu Saya melihat juga kejenuhan dari masyarakat awam atau anak-anak muda Jadi anak-anak muda kayak young people tuh like boring with the television music ya Jadi ketika <coughs> ada ketika ada konser yang sedikit aneh itu mereka senang Nah di sana kita malah oh ternyata anak riset saya setelah main di Bali, di Calengka, di Bandung, di mana-mana, di Semarang itu Riset saya adalah Oh mereka itu juga ternyata Anak-anak muda Indonesia itu juga Buring dengan kondisi musik yang ada di televisi Jadi uh, Kondisi musik yang di televisi Televisi musik itu like uh, Mereka jenuh Karena mungkin mereka tidak menemukan sesuatu yang Bagi mereka itu uh, Oh ini uh, Menjadi sebuah penyegaran Buat pikiran mereka Buat wacana mereka tentang musik Jadi kondisi apa uh, po- musik es- mungkin eksperimental dalam tanda kutip uh, di Indonesia oke okay. maksudnya banyak anak-anak muda yang butuh itu mereka untuk melihat wacana karena kan setiap hari mereka tuh dicekokin dengan uh, musik-musik uh, yang hanya ada di- yang 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 dari te- yang dari televisi jadi mereka seperti tidak apa ya uh, televisi seperti bi- apa kasih poison radio ketika kita ada di supermarket ketika kita ada di pasar Ketika kita 
ada di terminal meskipun anda tidak tidak tahu lagu itu kalau anda di Indonesia mungkin dua minggu tiga minggu tiga minggu pasti udah apal oh ini lagunya seperti ini karena sudah terbiasa mata telinga itu semuanya diajar sudah untuk promosi industrialisasi musik di sana kondisinya diajar telinga ya, ya dimanapun kita berada pasti ketemu musik Indonesia yang pop yang industrial seperti itu nah pergerakannya dulu Uh, uh, sempat rame festival-festival kontemporer di sana festival-festival musik kontemporer ada cuma pada saat itu mereka hanya menyentuh orang-orang yang yang berada di komunitas university atau school nah, lah terus uh, mungkin tidak tahu karena waktu kayaknya komunitas-komunitas yang sering membuat acara itu sering runtuh ya karena hubungnya juga dengan dana nah, terus Uh, muncul yang dari grassroot, yang dari jalan, yang dari from dari dari jalanan, dari further street, like mereka juga butuh uh, eksper, uh, butuh mengak, pengak, mengaktualisasikan diri. Artinya mengaktualisasikan diri itu artinya mereka butuh berekspresi atas apa yang menjadi persoalan mereka dan itu mereka mulai membuka kantong-kantong baru, membuat acara-acara sendiri. Ya seperti itulah. Ya pada <laughs> Pada dasarnya uh, musik eksperimental di Indonesia ada gitu ya. ya ada. ada tapi masih di ruang-ruang tertentu, tidak seperti mungkin di kita seperti di uh, di Holland ini. Mungkin di di Indonesia di Bandung di khususnya di Indonesia itu ada, cuman di ruang-ruang tertentu di institusi sekolah tinggi juga ada, mas, tapi mungkin masih tingkat proses atau uh, secara popularitas belum popularitas betul gitu. Jadi pada dasarnya ada eksperimental gitu, cuman tidak seperti di kita gitu, mungkin itu. Okay. Um, since we arrived, uh, first we did like a three day thing, a three day kind of a residency thing in Worm. Um, so in the basically for all the residencies we are doing here in Worm and here, we're just um, trying to record all the stuff that we that we that we play together. Um, yeah, why? I mean because we we, we almost never have uh, this opportunity to be together for one in the same uh, country, much less the same city, um, and to have all this time and as especially the space and the equipment. To get all this stuff down, and uh, and I think that that's all we're kind of focusing on these couple of weeks uh, since we have arrived. Okay. Okay. Oh shit! Should I have brought the printed out stuff? <laughs> Um, the Future Sounds of Folk is basically a, a project that um, that came about when I was trying to kind of integrate a lot of uh, traditional sounds in uh, my own uh, music making process as One Man Nation. And through this, I, I started to, first I started to um, work with the gamelan sounds. I was trying to develop, uh, I was already building a lot of kind of... Uh, cheap uh, gamelan um, digital instruments in, in, in the computer and from there I, I, I met up with a friend uh, from Portugal called Jonathan who runs a uh, super basically um, we decided together to take a residency at Worm at their studio to kind of um, find out how we can process uh, gamelan sounds in different ways um, through this basically I decided that pff, For me, I, I wasn't really interested in, in, in processing gamelan sounds and working on a very compositional uh, way. You know, that wasn't, that wasn't for me um, what the future sounds of folk is. But till, till this point, it still wasn't called the future to work with Stime uh, on the future sounds of folk when it, when it kind of um, became uh, the future sounds of folk in the sense that, mm, that I needed to go through the experience of doing the field work of going to Indonesia and to look for to look for um, music which I feel is 
kind of uh, representative of what is to me. To me, it's a very personal project. I'm not going to speak in broad terms. What is to me uh, the future sounds of folk, and and that's how the project basically came about. Mm. <laughs>